This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Brace yourself and experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. The Bible says when it's come, He will guide you into all truth. Like I said to us, there are many dimensions of truth, and one of those dimensions of truth is the truth of divine timings. That God it has placed God that His will be downloaded into modules, and that these modules are measured by time frames. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He shall tell you of things to come. Many of the seasons that we are called to take advantage of are ahead of us, and so you will need a prophetic lens. To be able to view every season of your life for you. Do you know that God knows the day that your wife will get pregnant? Do you know? You know. You know that day, Gaga. You said He knows. Do you know that He knows the order in which your children will come? How many are you thinking about? Five? Six? Any number is good, but it's even the number of children must be by download you are created to be dependent and one of the areas of most notice dependence second only to prayer it even advertises in prayer is that there is a knowledge there is an insufficiency of knowledge that will be advertised in every human being and where that knowledge is not gotten you live life as a victim God already knows the day your wife will give birth to children. When you don't know when she will get pregnant. The months are calculated. It's a time appointment. If you ask him, he can tell you. When I walked the other time to talk to my wife or something God told me about you, something positive anyway, that's what I went to tell her. I was doing my normal prayer here. But the Lord said, he has judged you faithful in an aspect of your life and told me to make a decision. So I went to my wife right there because I didn't want it to wait to tell her this is what the Lord told me. It means even your seasons of rewards, you don't know them. And if you don't know the season of your rewards, you will not even know the seasons of your appraisals. So life can be lived casually thinking that nothing is happening. Meanwhile, Accompanying your every labor is a God who is jotting. Who is jotting? If you knew that he was coming to jot, will you not be serious? But you don't even know. But according to this scripture, you can know because a man can be guided into all truth. That when we check divine timings and we check your life, we find out that you are not ahead of God, you are not behind him, you are with him. That's what brings peace when everybody's marrying around you and you are not married yet. Because you have checked in God. That is not time. Let me help a few ladies. When every other person is getting engaged and you are not yet engaged, you can be worried. Life will teach you that the first person who gets engaged is not the first person who marries. Some people will need to spend seven years I mean, for some brothers, their economy will suffer for seven years. And some people will only experience that for two months. And in case you went to a class where they said, if it's seven years courtship, they know themselves very well. No, no, no. Courtship does not dem demystify marriage in detail. Um, it tries, so It tries. But you see, the reason why an unmarried person can teach how to build a good home without experience is that there is a spirit in man. And by the inspiration of the Almighty, that man can be furnished not with knowledge, with or in natural dimensions, understanding is born out of matching knowledge to produce experiences. I'm saying that the knowledge can be shifted and the man can come into it. That's when, even when it comes into the interactions with the Lord and the possibilities in the kingdom, age is not an advantage. You can know. You can know in hundred level what your life looks like. You don't have to wait. 
So that when, when somebody comes and says, let's do this thing in 200 level, you laugh. And say, not time. And the person says, eh, hey. some people said not time. And they've been waiting. You know that you are not appointed that way. I've shared my story. At 37, I walked into church there. May God give you understanding one day. And one woman said to me, Eh, hey. I said, I'm not I'm not telling you. But I want to know you not marry time. The first Sunday she said it, it pained me. I went back home. Jesus didn't even answer me. What it meant was that my concern had nothing to do with him. Because there was a time. Meanwhile, the precious lady just walked into a WCN one day and started attending. Did I invite you? She smiled. I didn't invite her. But while I was minding Jesus, one day as she told us, and I believe her, Jesus said, this is your pastor, that's your husband. But there was no interaction. She didn't even come one day to say, in case, in case, God mentions this name. I, I'm the one. She didn't show up. Just minding my business. The second day that woman gave me that thing, I gave her a savage answer. When you go on, YouTube, on Twitter, you can learn this kind of answers. We have certain fathers who have those answers. There are two I can recommend. One is Apostle Gideon Luduma. The other one is Daddy Mike Bamlu. He has those, those answers that will quieten your soul. It will inform your soul that you are talking to. So the woman now said, Hey, Pastor, I mean, we fool him. And I was, uh uh. Where were all these laughter girls, boys, they are marrying themselves. You not marry. She, when their children start calling your uncle, and I looked at her, I said, When you can produce a lady who can match my destiny, I'll marry. So after that Sunday, she used to just greet me. I still don't know where the answer came from, but it was a deliverance from heaven. Because that woman was an afflictor. Imagine you are going to church, and you know we used to dance very well in church. You are going to church, and they afflict you with what is. She, she can't count the number of people who get healed after service when they come and say, pray for us. Or the people that are inspired, she doesn't want to know those ones. Is this thing that she thinks is a problem but God was counting a time frame because according to a prophecy that I heard the stability I needed for my marital relationship was supposed to be forged when someone in my bloodline had successfully passed the test of marriage for a generation 40 years so I married in the 40th year of my parents wedding because we have no such track record in about five generations of a man staying true to his one wife for one generation Jesus didn't want me to fight a battle. And people were counting time for me. The reason why I know that this my son will not fight is because his grandfather fought for him. So you don't know all these stories. And if you don't know all these stories, people will put your life on the edge. But in the days of your discouragement, you can peep into what he's doing. Who had known the mind of God. Give me that verse of scripture. That's 1 Corinthians 2. Give me from 15. 16 is what I actually need. But give me from 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. What's in 16? For who had known the mind of the Lord. That he may instruct him. He says but we have. The mind of Christ. Is that the last verse there? That's the last verse there. We have the mind of Christ. He didn't say that your mind is the mind of Christ. He said that there's an auxiliary mind. In a, in a car gear system, there's a regular gear. But when you get into mode, have you seen those cars that they ride four times four to? They don't ride it much now because most of the cars are four wheels. It means if you get stuck, you need a four by four auxiliary gear. Sometimes they are not big. Most times, it's just a small gear. When you engage it, instead of your engine supplying power to two tires, it communicates power to four tires. And you can at one jump get out of the mode. My invitation is that you can run this mind of Christ as an auxiliary mind. It means that your life will be a tale of troubles and deliverances. 
Meanwhile, you can adopt this mind as your primary mind of function. That your own will be auxiliary and after a while your own will be unnecessary because we will never walk in the mud. Pastor Chintok said something. We want to pray. In that song, show me the way that I may follow. You remember the song? What he said was that Jesus lived in the midst of many enemies but he never fell into the hands of anyone that God had not programmed him to fall into. He only died the death that heaven had appointed even though he had many enemies. And that's how to live. Everything that he did was has read from a book. And so when he sang, show me the way that I may follow. What he was saying was, I found out that there's a way that you have created, a way that is known to you. Let me read from that same book. For the steps, that's Pastor Matthew Ashimolo now, for the steps of a goodly man are not just the only thing that God orders. He also orders his steps. And if you look at what a step is, a step is a combination of movements and stoppages. One step, two steps. So I moved, I stopped, I moved, I stopped. It is God who regulates how long the stop will be and how wide the stride will be. He must show you. Our kairoses are important, but even our chronoses are very important. Because between two kairoses is the chronos. And if you misbehave in your chronos, it means you will miss the kairos. And life becomes a circle of near success, near success, near success. Because what a merciful God will do in recovering a kairos is to re-give to your chronos. There are things that we miss that we cannot get immediately. To get them back, we need to journey back in a cycle. And if you have not known how to live right, it means that the cycles will be repeated. And if you look into some families, there is a day appointed for that family, but the cycles are always repeated. So that's how it was for his father too. That's how it was for his father too. That's why it was for his father. And the father dies. And because the cycle has not hit, the son walks into his cycle. I know that you are saved. I'm not speaking of causes. I'm speaking of patterns that are proof that you belong to a natural bloodline. Jesus died to see us exit all of them. But one of the things that his death produced as deliverance is that there are knowledge structures in God that you can take advantage of. What I'm saying is that the cross not only made available potencies, there are wisdoms that came from the cross. And there are victories that a man may not be able to testify of even though Jesus has accomplished it for you because you are not wise. This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.